there's never been a stand-up comedy show in prime time. Okay, there's been variety shows, but none of them have given comedians who all they had to do was show up and do three minutes and be the best three minutes. Hi, my name is Ralphie May. I live in a place called Da Hood, D-A Hood, Da Hood. Population, all them bitches, can I get a what, what, holla? You're probably just a little prejudiced watching Ralphie come in and just like, go, oh, he's gonna do these jokes about being overweight and blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't. He sneaks up on you and he really has original material. I actually live with Mexicans. I like Mexican people. The coolest thing about hanging out with Mexicans is if you ever forget a Mexican dude's name, you can always just read their necklace and that's just convenient. It's like, what's your name? Nomar. What kind of messed up name is Nomar? Ramon! Come on, stars, man! Ralphie, thank you. Great job. Thank you, guys. And Bob and I would love to see you in the semifinals um, in a couple weeks. Great. Thank you, fellas. Thank you very much, everybody. Welcome to Last Comic Standing. First off, on my right, from San Francisco, California, big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Rob Cantrell. And on my left, ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, Mr. Ralphie May. Rob and Ralphie are going to perform their act for you guys. Then our live audience will vote electronically, deciding who you think is the funniest. Okay? Whoever wins will come back to our comic house and stay on television. The comic that loses has to get their bags that they've already packed and go back to wherever they come from. All right? You follow me? Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause from Houston, Texas, for Mr. Ralphie May? Hey, what's up? My name is Ralphie May. I'm from Houston, Texas. I now live in a place called Duh Hood. I like living in the hood. And, and my resolution this year because I'm living in the hood is uh, it was not to lose weight because at this point, screw it. You know what I mean? Seriously. This is more than a Diet Coke fix. You know what I'm saying, kids? <laughs> my thing this year was to be correct. Not politically correct anymore. Okay, because I'm tired of it. You got to think about what group and what. It's too much. It changes all the time. I just want to be correct. Like, I, I don't say African American, okay, because I don't say European American for white people. I say black folks, right? What? What? You're right. Right. Plus, I, I live in the hood. I ain't never met. There's black people here. Any of y'all been to Africa? That's what I thought. What the name y'all after someplace y'all been, like Compton Americans? Right? Inglewood Swap Meet American. Vietnamese nail salon American. Not African American. I, I feel bad for African American. I mean, black people, because y'all had a tough year, boy. This has been a bad year. People, you got Michael Jackson sneezing, blowing his nose off, playing yo yo with his baby. But that really ain't y'all's problem no more. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like our problem. You know what I mean? He moved outside. And if there's any Asians, he's moving towards you. You know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. That's all he's got left. And then y'all had the Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston interview. Are you out of your mind? They don't do cocaine. Fine, whatever. I'm just bloated. Okay, fine. Are you out of your mind? Bobby Brown was sweating like R. Kelly at the Kids' Choice Awards. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, I said it. What's up? Then they bring out the fat baby. Thank God somebody's eating in that house, because good Lord, they're skinny over there. All that cocaine. And that's Bobby Brown's little girl, because those teeth are jacked up. You see those teeth? Woo, they're in different area codes. That girl can eat both sides of the cob of corn at the same time. At least black folks, see, sometimes black folks get all upset about things, you know what I'm saying? Mexicans, y'all never get upset, do you? You don't get, I mean, if it's true and correct, you don't hate on it. I mean, most things you say, I said something messed up about Mexicans, y'all be like, Yo, Holmes, that's messed up. You can't say anything about anybody. Everybody's sensitive nowadays. You can't be politically incorrect, okay? Because somebody hurt their feelings. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Everybody in Hollywood, you can't say anything against gay people. No, stop it. Just stop. They are sensitive. Why? Because they sleep with dudes? Okay, because they sleep with men, they get to have a parade and mess up traffic for three days. <laughs> Girls, y'all sleep with men? Y'all don't get a damn parade? <laughs> Do you know? And gay people just take things. It used to be everybody's. Man, when you was a kid, you used to draw a picture of your house, you put a nice big-ass rainbow in the sky. 
gay. <laughs> they done took the rainbow. I want the rainbow back. You can't have the rainbow, damn it. We didn't vote on this. I didn't get an email. Because what if I have a little kid one day when my little boy come to me, Daddy, get this picture. <laughs> Come on, son, let's go paint your room pink. Come on now. <laughs> Everybody's too sensitive now. You can't say anything about that group or this group or this group or that group because they're blank Americans. Or they, oh, they're sensitive. <laughs> but it's always funny to make fun of fat people, isn't it? <laughs> Get the point? Ladies and gentlemen, our winner tonight with... 85% of the vote is Ralphie May. I didn't want to be the one that took Rob out. I liked him. I liked him a lot. That's, that's why I'm having a hard time with it. I mean, that kid's got more heart. So let's get started. Our first finalist tonight is the big man who took down Rob Cantrell. <laughs> and made that fan hide in the theater for over an hour. Let's take a closer look at Mr. Ralphie May. When I go out on stage tonight, I take the mic. Um, it's going to be great. You're, I'm more at home there than I am in most other forms because it's just, like I said, when this whole thing started, comedy's all about one man or one woman and one mic and the audience. If I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. I still made him laugh. Now, here he is from Houston, Texas. Please welcome Ralphie May. for the fat guy walking. Thanks. <laughs> wow, it's great to be here in Las Vegas in July. Thanks, NBC. Nice. <laughs> Jeez, are you trying to kill me? If I walk outside wearing all black, I'll explode. <laughs> As y'all seen from the show, I'm not your typical fat guy. I'm not jolly or merry. <laughs> I'm mad most of the time, and I got reason to be. I'm sick now of uh, people who are hypocrites and, you know, whiny people, punk-ass bitches. And, and I, really, I really don't like them, and it gets on my nerves. You know, the new thing is, if you're rich and you feel guilty about your privileged life, the new thing is to go out and protest something. You know, if you're whiny and everything's been handed to you, like, oh, my God. Everything is so totally great in my life, you know? Daddy pays for my $1,100 $1 studio apartment in West Hollywood, and I've got a BMW to drive, but it's two years old, but I'll manage. It's totally awesome. <laughs> and you feel guilty about it, right? So now they want to go and protest. Oh, my God. No war for oil. No war for oil. Oh, it's a war for oil. And it's so stupid. Hello, we've got Quaker State here. You're right, girl. <laughs> You are so right. <laughs> oh my God. We should go and protest. You're right. We'll take my dad's expedition. <laughs> it's hypocritical. <laughs> and these are the same people two years ago were protesting paper companies and logging companies for cutting down trees to make paper. And they're like, oh no, you can't cut down these trees. They're magical. There's like elves in there, and they're going to help three midgets and a crackhead take a ring to a volcano. It's magic trees. Don't cut these trees down for paper. And now this year, they're protesting in the streets with big-ass paper signs. Oh, yeah. I'm sick of it. Everybody's been crying. Everybody's been whining about this. They're like, no war for oil. It's a war for oil. It's a war for oil. for one good movie. I want cheap gas. Push all the red buttons. I don't give a 
goddamn. Light them up, George. Light them up. That's all I said. You're damn right. I'm mad. And I want to buy, I want cheap gas, and I want to buy from a good gas station like Exxon or Mobile. Not a ghetto, thrifty gas company where leaves come out of the pipe. That gas wouldn't start a barbecue grill. The hell with that gas. I want some Tecron. Don't you want some Tecron? Hell yeah. Put some Tecron in our gas. Put some Optimus Prime in there. I don't give a damn. I want cheap gas. Well, look at it. One country down, 15 more to go. Light them up. I swear to God. It's about time we shook night that whole region. Just shook night them. Take their gas. Pump them up. And I'm shame on you, Michael Moore. You can't fit your chunky ass in an electric car. I want cheap gas. You're damn right. Light them up. I'm sick of this. Hey, I didn't tell them to fly planes in the buildings. They brought it to us. Let's bring it back. Look, they get paid one at a time to blow themselves up to go to Allah. Let's just speed up the trip. Light them up. I want cheap gas. for two years. Do you know how long it takes me to put my shoes back on at the airport? Light them up! You're damn right I want cheap gas. I swear to God. Hold on. Hold on. I swear to God, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. You know, two weeks ago, I filled up at, in the ghetto gas station. Crenshaw, Crenshaw and Adams, that's the ghetto where homeless people only come up to you because they know you ain't got no change to spare. I filled up at $2.22 a gallon. That's too, too, too damn much. If it hit, I swear to God, people, if it hit two fifty, I was going over. I can't run at all, but I sure as hell can't push a button. And I'd make a very scary paratrooper. Thank you, y'all been great. Thank you so much. Immediately after the show, you're going to have your chance to vote for Ralphie. The phone number is 1-866-VOTE-401. The lines will open immediately after the show, and you will have one hour to cast your vote by phone. That fan is now waiting in the wings, hopefully not under a curtain. And when we get back, it's time for his shot at the title. Ladies and gentlemen, Ralphie May. Let me tell you something. After, after the rat... After the rat ran by, Ralphie did it. You gotta show him what you can okay. do. It. You gotta do it. Ralph, okay. the rat here it is. Let's set it up. Hold on. What are we doing here? Okay, this is what happened when uh, the, rat. the rat. Okay, I don't like rats. Okay, <laughs> that's why I'm surprised I'm friends with Voss. But uh, <laughs> now, come on, the teeth. Come on, people. Come on. All right. uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you. All right. This is what happened when I saw the rat. It was like. Oh, <laughs> We know how to get Ralphie to exercise. <laughs> that, that's the most cardio he's done all year. Every time there was an argument in the house and Ralphie didn't like it, he would take his clothes off. True. We would all shut up. Get naked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's not everything. Ralphie was well, That was a very stressful time, okay? I am too fat to be walking around with clothes on all the time, and, <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't sometimes. I just get bored, you know? But, I mean, your camera's all the time, and, and there is no good angle for me to look less fat. <laughs> all right, let's take a moment and talk about relationships. Comics can be very funny, and comics can be evil, as we all know, and sometimes it's hard to tell where to draw the line, and here's an example. The joke was we were gonna play hide and go seek and get Dad to go hide, but nobody was gonna go look for him. We said go, and Dad was just a streak. Uh, I don't know how fast he thinks Ralphie is, but he was just a streak. 
Uh, I think we're around 19 minutes now. Dad's been uh, <laughs> successfully hiding from Ralphie. I'm trying to pretend that there's an axe murder in the house. What the hell is wrong with you guys? <laughs> what did you guys do? What did you do? <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never playing this with you, you guys again. <laughs> this, this is so stupid. <laughs> Whose idea was it to play hide and seek? Dave. Dave. Dave <laughs> Dave <laughs> I thought it would be Wait funny. Wait a minute. What's really pathetic is I actually really wanted to play hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. A loser. She was kind of angry that we weren't really playing. And I go, no, we're not looking for dad. <laughs> when he, when he... Oh, okay, now it's fine. Okay, here's how they got me. Okay, they go, hey, Ralph, you want to play hide and go seek? And you're going to be it. I go, no, I'm not. No, that means going up all them stairs. No. They said, no, you, all you have to do is count to seven. Perfect. <laughs> okay. I got a question for you, Dad. When you came downstairs and realized it was all a gag, the first words out of your mouth was, I'm never playing hide and seek with you guys again. See? <laughs> See? See? <laughs> is this a game you play at home with your family? No, or... this is the thing. You and your buddies get together in San Diego. No, you see, I believe them because, like, I figured, okay, Ralphie's a big guy. I love Ralphie. But you're a big guy, so it yeah. probably would take you a while to get to the other side of the house, yeah. right? <laughs> That's what, no, I love you, man. No, listen, no, no, no. I'm all the way at the other side in the theater, and you know that's way up, like, on the fourth floor yeah. or whatever. So I'm like, I'm winning. I'm winning the prize. Yeah. <laughs> the show didn't. Nobody knows though. We felt so bad the next day we went out and bought him a really nice shirt. We went out. That is him. true. We went that out is, yeah, that's him. True. I, I uh, agree. Look at yeah. the Don with a heart of gold. Right. Right. Welcome back to Last Comic Standing. America has voted, and in just a few moments, we will begin eliminating our finalists until we are down to the last comic standing. No pressure, right? Before we start the eliminations, I want to look at the performances that got our five finalists here. Let's start by taking a look at Ralphie May. How about a big round of applause for Ralphie May? You got an order like you're from the hood, or the drive through guy will shoot you out of respect. It's like, yo, what up, player? Yo, money, can you give me a jumbo, Jizek? And he's testing me, y'all. He goes, oh, wit cheese? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Ralphie, uh, just so there's no conflict of interest, were you ever on Fear Factor? No, no. Okay, good. I could be an event. If you ever have a near-death accident in a car, that's what stand-up comedy feels like. And the elephant, I didn't know this, they had the strongest sense of smell. They took, he took his trunk and placed it on my crotch and breathed in. And I experienced the joy what did that elephant trunk do to you again? What did you say he did? He put his trunk right there, and he, uh, bullseye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the last key for the people that'll be living together in the house on Last Comic Standing is going to be handed to Mr. Ralphie May. There are no barriers in comedy. That's the beautiful thing about it. All it is is one man and one mic. You can't say anything about that group or this group or this group or that group, but it's always funny to make fun of fat people, isn't it? <laughs> Get the point. Ladies and gentlemen, our winner tonight is Ralphie May. As long as I can win on a mic, I'm gonna win every time. You said, Ralphie, that you in a microphone, you're gonna win every time. You still stand by that statement? Yeah. Nice. That's Ralphie May, everybody. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, all right. 
Welcome back to Last Comic Standing from the Paris Hotel and Casino here in beautiful Las Vegas. Our finalists are about to perform for you one last time, but before they do, here's what their housemates had to say about Ralphie May. Ralphie is all heart. Ralphie's also one of those guys that's kind of in your face, but he'd also give you this shirt off his back, which would be good enough for several of us, actually. He's a little nuts, but I like Ralphie. He's a very powerful comic. Ralphie May, death from behind. How about that? He has a path, and he won't let anything stop him. I mean, he's a powerhouse comedian, so he's really funny. He calls himself a hip-hop comic, so he's kind of got this Houston hip-hop um, ghetto boy thing going. Uh, but he's white. Ralphie May is a moving battleship. He's just sensitive, that's all. Well, they all have their opinions about our friend Ralphie. Now, the voting is over. This is just a treat we added in for you guys here and you home in America in his final performance on this show. Ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, please welcome Ralphie May. Hey. Hey. How are you? Y'all just saw me. I don't know why you're standing up again, but thank you. <laughs> it's great to be here. I, uh, I'm really, uh, really proud of this show, and I was really glad to be on it, um, just for fat people everywhere. Um, and even, hey, I'm an extreme example, but, you know, fat people in general. You know, I still get prejudiced, too. It's just subtle things, like when I get on the elevator and there's anybody already on the elevator, they always look at me like, oh, hell no. <laughs> and then they very slowly look up to try and find the capacity. They're like... And then they do the math in their head. They're like, carry the one, divide by. <laughs> but as a man, we got a lot easier than women do. You know what I'm saying? Especially with TV and stuff. Because a man, you're not fat if you're a man until you're 100 pounds or more overweight. Anything under 100 pounds if you're a man, you're not fat. You're chubby, big boned, or coach. Right? <laughs> coach, yeah. Uh, but women, y'all get it every day, don't you, girls? And it ain't never about 100 pounds, is it, girls? It's about 10, 15 pounds. In California, it's 7, 8, 9 pounds. And you're told you're always too big. You're always told you're too big. Something's always wrong with you. Look at TV. This very medium I'm on right now says you're too... Something's wrong with you. Bull crap. There's nothing wrong with you. Be what you gotta be. You don't have to look like something to be somebody. And girls, you get hated on all the time. Most of the time by other women. Ain't that something? You go to the grocery store, girls, all you want to do is buy you a pint of Hawken Dice ice cream, right? That's right. It's your time of the month. You want to go home and have you a cry, right? You don't want no drama. You don't want anybody touching you, looking at you. But you, before you can get out of the grocery store, those magazine covers, you know, the skinny white bitches with their, mag with their big windblown hair and their $4,000 ugly dress with a big ass hole in it. They're like, no, it's designer. Bitch, that's a hole, right? And they got those big fake lips like they just burned somebody breakfast in Texas. I'm sorry. I'm tired of it. TV says you're too fat like Ally McBeal. I'm glad that show got canceled. Good. That girl's got some buffet time to make up. That's what I'm saying. What's up? I'm tired of it. Always too damn skinny. I saw her on TV. I thought I had to send that girl 75 cents. I thought my 75 cents can save Ally McBeal. She's so skinny last week, she fell down on the set and they faxed her to the hospital. That's a skinny bitch. You're, oh, something's always wrong. You're 140 pounds and you gotta diet down because society says you got to. Now you diet down to 95 pounds, you done order messed up stuff like salads with no lettuce. How the hell are you gonna have a salad with no lettuce? Um, I just like some air and, okay, thank you. You diet down to nothing, you got no breasts, and, and, and you want, oh no, when I get fake breasts, that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get fake breasts. When I have fake breasts, the whole world's gonna change for me. I'm gonna get like free cars and free money and everything. And when I take off my bra, there's gonna be like music and lights. Oh. <laughs> Look, girls, hey, breasts don't mean anything. I got a nice rack my damn self, and I don't even. That's what I said. Your butt. 
you got no ass anymore. You got like a little place where butt used to be. You got to grab a skinny white girl butt, you wouldn't even get ass. You get like knee joint and spine. You're like. That's why I like a big thick ass. Something you can grab a whole tub. Thick ass. But not anymore. No, no, it's because those stupid pants they made y'all wear. Them stupid, too tight for your skinny, tight ass pants. Come on, oh, I'm sick of them. $40 for extra pants. And I know there's skinny women out there mad at me. Screw you, fat guy, screw you. Hey, look girls, don't come up to me because you'll get something to eat like a big old bowl of these nuts. Peace. Guest law. Fortunately, losers are always welcome on this program. <laughs> he may have been the second to last comic standing, but he's first in our hearts. Here he is, the gigantic Ralph May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ha ha. Love it, love it. <laughs> I think that seat is actually in you. <laughs> Ralphie, um, we were very disappointed. We were certain that you were going to win. And in fact, we called Ralphie at the last minute and said, please fly um, from Las Vegas right here. What happened? Is that fan character won? Yeah, that fan won. Nobody likes him, though. Exactly. And everyone, <laughs> and everyone loves you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is that, are you doing, are you pulling like a, a Reuben where you're gonna endorse those number two shirts? <laughs> I know, I'm just number two and I'm a big fan of dropping deuces, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, that's nice. That's real nice. <laughs> now, what happened? Do you think that you were swindled? Do you think that um, they discriminated against you because you pretend to be black all the time? <laughs> what do you think happened? I think I lost. That's it. Were, Not really funny, but it's the truth. Were you happy for him when he won? Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been happy for Voss or Corey Kahaney. Yeah. I would have been real happy for those you guys. You guys didn't like this dad friend. Nobody seemed to like this guy. How the hell did he win? Because uh, uh, white girls love him, okay? Really? Uh, I don't know. The people who vote love him. Hello, he's Asian. They have computers <laughs> and cell phones. What am I talking about? <laughs> How the hell was I supposed to vote against him? <laughs> Well, I couldn't understand a word he was saying. You guys did some terrible things to him, though, right? Terrible? Shut up! Have no. you seen this show lately? Yeah, Come on! You guys played hide-and-seek, and then he was hiding, and no one went to find him. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. not nice. My 11-year-old niece, Ginger, said that she wouldn't have fallen for it. So, come on. Yeah, come on. Yeah. That's sap. Come on. <laughs> so, you know what you should have done? You know what you should have done on the show, right? You would have guaranteed to win. What's that? Well, you should have done this. What you did on our show. You Ralphie that? May! <laughs> the funniest thing that this show's ever done. No question about it. No doubt about it. No question about it. And I still can't get a co-host on this thing. Is it the chair thing? I'll bring my own chair. Why are you busting my stone? Why are you doing like this? Well, yeah, I, you know what, though? I tell you what, it, it worked out well. It worked out well coming in second for this young man now, didn't it? He's uh, on this show every night, practically. He's the kiss of death. I think it's going to be all right. Think of it this way. You didn't have to go on Jay Leno's show tomorrow, right? Man, the only reason I wanted to go on Jay Leno's show tomorrow was because Arnold Schwarzenegger's going to be on there tomorrow, and I could maybe get my $9 back for collateral damage. <laughs> <laughs> Players got to get his money, you know what I'm saying? Are you going to come to the movies with us, Ralphie? Jiggly, hello, yeah. Jiggly, Ralphie, make this on there. Yeah. It's going to be popcorn, right? 
There will be popcorn. We'll get you. Okay. Yeah. We'll get you one of those refillable tubs. It'll be fantastic. All right. All right, everybody. We got Macy Gray, Fred Willard, Damon Dash, Ralphie May. We'll be right back with a